What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's week 248 in the week of rotation, and a lot of versatile stuff this week. We got some fresher stuff, but slightly heavier profiles across the, I would say, the majority of these, where uh, they're not just basic freshies. We got a couple new releases, a couple classics, modern classics, anyways. And uh, what I believe the greatest blue fragrance of all time. Actually, the most versatile blue fragrance of all time. Niche and designer happen to be in here. At least in my opinion, they are. And uh, we got some good stuff. Again, new releases. The so-called King, which I probably put in the thumbnail. Some really good scents this week. No two ways about it. Again, like I said, it's week number 248. We're gonna dive into this rotation, so stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday, the most versatile blue niche of all time to me. You may not agree. I don't care. It's just how I feel. Just like you shouldn't care how I feel. Uh, as long as you're enjoying your fragrance, that's all that matters. Because literally everything here is of my opinion. And uh, Seraphine Blue from Zaharoff. My favorite release of the year. It's on the fresher side of blue. I mean, it's... I never put that big of a dent in a bottle in a few months' time. Like, Ever. I couldn't tell you how many years it's been since this was a thing. I just love wearing this. It really speaks to my taste. It's it's minty, green, fresh, crisp, a little creamy and powdery, aquatic, and more of a like misty aquatic instead of like a super heavy, watery accord. Um, it's not over the top salty, but there's a little bit of saltiness to it. It's musky. Uh, there's a Again, soft creaminess to it because I don't get a lot of the coconut, but others have told me they get a lot of it. Teased their own different skin, different noses, all that good stuff. But just across the board, I'm a big, big fan of this one. There's no two ways about it. Uh, when we do our annual recaps at the end of the year for best release of this, most worn of that, this is going to be at the top of a few of those for me because uh, it's not because George is my friend. It's because I love this damn fragrance. It really speaks to me i hope you can find some joy even half as much joy out of a fragrance this year that i have been getting out of zaharoff signature seraphine blue as my scent of the day and speaking of it was a double whammy of zaharoff that day just got out the shower went with a shave and used signature seraphine i mean i'm sorry signature citrine uh shave shave soap aftershave splash and the grooming balm, which is basically a body lotion. This stuff smells incredible. This heightens the green note that's in the heart of the fragrance. I'm just such a fan. It makes the skin feel really, really good. You don't need a lot of it. I would highly encourage checking this out if you like some of his ancillary products that have come out over the years, because I think this is the best one. We need more scents like this. Like, give me rosé, give me black rose, give me tobacco. Give me Royal X. Like, I need I need more in this lotion. This is good stuff. Out the shower, Zaharoff Signature Citrine. Moving into Monday, one of the better, highly versatile releases of the year. One of Mancera's better, slightly fresher releases in the last several years. We're talking about Mancera's Amberful. I'm a big fan of this one. You get citrus, greens, woods, a light, dry, spicy accord. The Yuzu comes across lemony to me. I get Tigar meets Ganymede without being the exact same notes, but similar accords. I don't get loads of Embroxin and stuff like that. It's a, it's a citrus amber, like my man Selly described it to me before I picked it up. Shout out to Selly knows it all. And uh, yeah, very much amber's in the name. Amber is definitely in the base of the fragrance. It's a, it's a warm citrus. It's green. It's got a touch of that metallic tone, green and metallic. There's your Ganymede tie-in. Again, with woods, spices, it's just highly versatile. It's fresh yet dense enough to do anything and everything. Really good performance. Man, what a great release from them. During the day, man, Sarah's Amberful. And then when I got the shower, I think Rack Store Find of the Year. We are talking Vibrant Summer from Tommy Hilfiger. Man, you cannot go wrong with this one. Um, if you see this one at any of the rack stores, it was popping up Burlington, Ross Dress for Less, all the different places in a range of prices from like 17 to 25 bucks. It's worth it for all of them. It's got this coconut water, slight green feel. 
a little on the fruity side of things. Just a beautiful tropical summertime fragrance. Probably their best summer flanker they've put out in many years. Out the shower, Tommy Vibrant Summer. Moving into Tuesday, hot off the presses, fresh new release, The Flanker, the sequel to Seraphine Blue. We got Zaharoff Signature Seraphine Red. Now this is more about amber, woods, and spices. Because what carries over is that eucalyptus mintiness. You have some piney green accord at the top. So it's very green minty and pink pepper dominant sweet spice at the top. Um, you lose the iris. You lose uh, the coconut. You lose the apple. You lose a lot of the tropical side of it. And you garner a warm woody nuance with a little bit of florals in the heart that I don't really get much of. I've been seeing some people say they get the rose and... I haven't really seen anybody really talk about the Lang Lang, but I don't really get the florals on my skin, but I get a warm wood smell. This vetiver sandalwood amber combo in the heart, in the base really shines in this fragrance for me. And you still have that minty aquatic tone that is the main uh, DNA and the main focal point of the two seraphim fragrances, that eucalyptus, that red seaweed with the sea notes. You still get that. It's a very uh, minty peppered aquatic with a warm woody base. Just good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Another one I highly encourage you sampling. This is not its only appearance here on this list, but during the day, the new signature Seraphine Red, because when I got the shower, back to the well. It's not too often I keep spraying a decant like this, but I guess I just really like it. And when it hits discounters, I'll get a bottle. This is my decant of Versace Eros Energy. You can see I got about half of it gone. I've been wearing it. Very much like a lemony Aventus cologne type. It's a beautiful citrus and fruity fragrance, uh, a little bit of greens, and woods and musk, um, hint of spice, you know, clear tie into the Aventus DNA, but you know, not one to one. Like I've heard people say Explorers Dry Down, which is like Aventus and you know, yeah, there's, there's no denying that it ties to that kind of stuff, but you know, it's really good for lack of a better term. It smells really good. Some will be disappointed. Some will be happy with it to each their own. Spend your money on whatever the hell you want to spend your money on because uh, I'm not buying it for retail. But when I get an opportunity to get it at a discount, I'm getting a bottle. Out the shower, Versace Eros Energy. Moving into Wednesday. So the so-called king, as it were, Creed Aventus, my 19S11 batch. Definitely heavy on the pineapple, apple, and musk. Don't really get heavy nuances of other things. I mean, you get a little bit of the smoke from the birch, some black currant, all those things that give it that darker tone. Not real heavy on the florals, the vanilla, or the oak moss. I'm not saying they're not present. They're just not strong accords and notes in the fragrance, but I've always enjoyed it. Aventus, you can't go wrong here. You know, nothing a beast here, but nothing weak either, around seven-ish hours. It's typically what I get from it. I do enjoy the way it smells. Once in a while, I like to reach for it. You can see it's got a little bit of a dent in the bottle. I've had it for years at this point. It was my first niche fragrance. I just talked about the 11 most important fragrances of all time in my collection and my journey through the years, and that's where this one fit in. It was my first niche fragrance. Kind of funny that it happened to be Creed Aventus. Won it in a raffle on Facebook years ago. And uh, I like to revisit it from time to time. I prefer its cologne flanker. Um, there's other niche fragrances that have a similar profile that I prefer to it, but there's no denying the impact this fragrance has had. It is an all-time great game-changing profile. You got to put some respect on the name, and uh, it was nice to revisit. Once in a while, I do like to revisit it. During the day, Creed Aventus, and then when I got the shower, something wildly different. Nautica Classic all-time great for a different reason when it comes to out the shower fragrances and nostalgia it's an all-time great for me um this was also in said video so we had a double whammy on the most important fragrances a salty aquatic basic shower gel scent uh but the vintage versions more florals woods deeper fragrance overall this is a shell of what it used to be but i still like to keep a bottle or two in tow because I get in the mood to wear it. I'll finish this bottle sooner than later. The juice level continues to drop. I've been wearing it more and more lately, but out the shower, not a classic. Moving into Thursday, it was a freshy double up type of day. I just talked about this one and I was in the mood to wear it. This is such a beautiful, soft, according to my wife, slightly feminine, citrus, green, fresh floral, woody fragrance. 
Parody to Sins, Eden. Yes, I said, according to my wife, feminine, because when she smelled it on me, she was like, that smells a little more feminine than what you normally wear. I was like, really? I wear rose and iris all the time. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that. She's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just something about it. it smells like a, a lot of white flowers. I said, I say the same thing, fresh white floral. And uh, she, she said, it doesn't smell bad at all. It smells good. I just was kind of surprised. It seems a little feminine. Shocked, but all right. I right, then. And uh, she came back later and she's like, I want to let you know. That stuff is so strong. It's still all over me. I keep smelling it. It smells phenomenal. So... For, I guess for her, she would like to steal the bottle, is how I took that. She didn't outright say it, but yeah, according to my wife, Eden, on the feminine side, that's for sure, was surprised that I was enjoying it. I don't find, is that damn feminine? Any of you that have it, do you find it super feminine? Feminine leaning? Yeah, for sure. But this the grapefruit here in the woods remind me of Elysium, just a little bit. It's not metallic like that. Elysium's a more uh, masculine fragrance than this. But it's a guilty pleasure fragrance that I like to reach for once in a while. I just talked about it, so I wanted to put it in the rotation. So definitely sample first. According to my wife, it's on the feminine side. So you never know who, what's going to smell like what to who. But I enjoy it nonetheless. Parody Descends Eden. Then we're at the shower. One of the greatest citrus openings of all time. Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre. Shame on me, I barely touched it this summer. I think this was the first time I wore it. And it's so phenomenal for the heat. It really is. Shame on me. The citron note has this heavy grapefruit smell to it. Slight earthy tone to the woody note. It's really simplistic and straightforward. I love it. If you like yellow citrus based fragrances, that makes this a must try. It's definitely the freshest of the line. Out the shower, Terre de Mez, Eau Givre. Moving into Friday, I wore it during the day. I wore it again out the shower. This is the second featured day for Zaharoff Signature Seraphim Red. Slowly but surely, I'm working on that juice level. Um, I didn't have this bottle as far in advance to the review like I did with Seraphim Blue, where I was able to really like knock down a nice little chunk of it. I was working off of the final rendition lab sample, which I've almost emptied leading up to this and then spent a little bit of time with this when this came in and put a review out for you guys uh from this bottle now i gonna say i've worn it like nine times ten times something like that now is it gonna have a dent level like seraphine blue as we near the end of the year probably not because i still like blue more i do like red red's very good but it's not in my top five this is my number one in my collection and from the house this is like number six, because I know people are going to ask, where does it fall in your top ten from Zahara? It falls in like number six. Uh, Citrine, still number five. Tabac, number four. Black Rose, number three. Rosé, number two. Seraphine Blue is my number one. But this is above things like Leather Tabac, Coco Loco, which are, my God, crazy good. Aurum, my God, crazy good. Point being, the top ten is just immaculate. Uh, Royal X, just... My God. So this is in, right there in the middle of that top 10. And I think more people are going to like this one than Seraphine Blue. Because Seraphine Blue very much speaks to my taste. But I've literally, like Randy, immediately told me he likes this better than Business Over Pleasure, Seraphine Blue, all that. Because he's a big Pink Pepper fan. Wasn't surprised to hear that. Some people are going to love this. I strongly encourage you to sample it. If you're interested at all, grab a sample. You can get samples for just... Seven bucks before the 10% off. Get your 3ML, spend a little time with it, and see if it's for you. Out the shower and during the day, signature Seraphim Red. Finally, on Saturday, this was the combo of the week. Uh, I'm starting to highlight that more and more, which I think was the best smelling day because of the duo of the day. Was just the peak of the week. Rhyme intended and kind of unintended at the same time. But during the day, what I believe to be the greatest blue designer fragrance of all time, this is the King of the Mountain. This is a true signature scent in my mind through and through. It's fresh enough for the summer, but warm enough for the winter. Not loud, refined and smooth. Bleu de Chanel Parfum, how I love thee. Man, man. Man, this is so good. This is perfection from a synthetic blue. I think, 
you know, some will disagree, some won't. So I, and as expected with my sin of the day post, people saying the EDP is better. I even mentioned it in there. I totally get it. Some people prefer the EDP. Not too many prefer the eau de toilette, though. I think that takes the caboose uh, in a lot of cases. But man, that lemony, zesty, just juicy citrus with all these warm woods. Light, smoky nuance. Beautiful magnetic cap and atomizer, which don't matter. And I just love the aesthetic of the bottle. I always have. This is perfection from a synthetic blue fragrance. I think it's the best ever. I think the only thing that'll top it is if they were to give me an elixir, which I don't know if they're ever going to do. I've been saying for like two years now, Chanel, I want a Blue de Chanel elixir. I heard Super Laguerre is amazing in the Chanel Laura Homme line. I haven't tried it yet. I do have a decant coming. Uh, sounds like I'm going to end up needing a bottle of that. But Chanel... That's great that the Allure Homme line got a flanker. I need another Blue de Chanel flanker because this has been the standard bearer for versatile, versatile blue fragrances has been the Blue de Chanel line. And I think every concentration, the DNA has improved personally. I think the Eau de Toilette was groundbreaking. I think the Eau de Parfum dwarfed the Eau de Toilette. And then this came around and it was, oh, Chef's Kiss, Magnifique, what I call the goat. This is it. This is the greatest blue ever to me. And again, I only th I think the only thing that can top it is potentially can top it. They might not is another Blue de Chanel flanker. So we'll see what the future holds. But during the day, Blue de Chanel Parfum. Then I got the shower last night. It's time for another shave. We went to Haroff Signature. Rosé, we got the splash right here, we had the soap, and of course I gave myself some sprays of the fragrance. This is a masterpiece in my opinion. I love this fragrance. Wife came sniffing me down. She came, she could smell it across the apartment. She said, you're wearing rosé. I wanted to come smell it. So this is a hit in this household for sure. Sweet smoky rose. You got sugar cane and vanilla bean for your sweet notes. The oud here is a dry, warm wood with amber, so dry, warm, woody. And the Bulgarian-Turkish-Rose-Peony combo with frankincense, Olibanum Tears, I think, as it's listed, is uh, makes for a very smoky, sweet rose coming off of my skin. It's sweeter off of my wife, smokier off of me. I just think this is just a masterpiece, absolutely stunning. So I'm saying, like, my favorite rose fragrance ever, my favorite floral men's fragrance ever with what I think is the best designer fragrance ever, really. Hence the best duo of the week during the day, Blue de Chanel Parfum, out the shower, signature rosé. Well, that was this week's rotation. And until next time, do me real quick a favor, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on all notifications because I sure appreciate you guys watching and that way you'll be able to be notified when future videos drop so you can check them out. Um, would you wear this week? I'm very curious, comment, comment down below what your rotation looked like because I'm always curious to see what you guys have been wearing. It was a stellar week. I'm not saying there's ever a week where I'm not smelling good. I mean, that week doesn't exist, but some are better than others. This one was pretty damn good, gotta say. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the stuff I wore this past week and give them a spray now, you'll probably end up thanking me later. Who dat? Happy NFL Sunday. Have a good one.